Pittsburgh are rolling down that east. Hey y'all, my name is Rusty, the Cowboy Trucker, and I want to thank you for coming back to visit us. Um, this is uh, Xerxes and my wife, the camera lady, the Sable. We want to talk a little bit about winter. Winter's coming up around, right around the corner. So Xerxes here needs protection from the elements just like anybody else. So you can see he got a nice little horse style blanket on to keep him from the wind chill and keep him dry. Yeah, we also got some snowshoes. Uh, these are Mutluck brand, and uh, they're waterproof, water resistant. Um, they uh, give them extra traction on ice with the rubber soles on here on the bottom. And uh, they're also to protect his feet from salt. This salt that they put down out here will actually eat up the paws in, in between the finger to the toes on the dog. And uh, nothing your pads on your dogs if you keep them on in severe cold and ice and snow for a few minutes let's say it's negative 20 they'll actually get frostbite on their feet if they're not used to that condition so i would advise uh check out the link below for a mutluck brand and we use these for years they're a little they come a little pricey sometimes depending on what type you get but you only have to buy them once if you take care of them um, if you like this video, please uh, think about liking, subscribing, and sharing because we're going to try to get some information out. A lot of drivers that are out here new and don't know what to do, how to keep their trucks safe out here on the road because a lot of these trucks are not built for severe winter conditions. All right, and uh, as we were talking about keeping Zuxi safe during winter, if you have any other questions with your pets, please don't don't hesitate to comment below. My wife used to be a vet tech and she's very, very knowledgeable uh, about taking care of your animals. She can even help you with non-weather related uh, issues sometimes. And uh, without further ado, we're going to move on over to the truck and um, talk about exactly what you need to do to keep your engine safe. So let's get it done. Hey y'all, thank you for joining me over here for the change section. So with chains, one of the things we want to touch off for, first of all, is security, because these will be stolen by people who don't have the money to buy them. Uh, so I'm, I fashioned these cable locks to go around the whole entire frame and through and with these little cheap master locks. And it's just here to keep someone honest, plus it gives you uh, extra benefit because it takes some weight off this bracket. That helps make everything safer when you're going down the road as well. So here on the side of the truck, we got chain hangers. Uh, ours that you're able to lock. There's a hole here and here and put a lock through and these are all of our single chains for our trailer and our steer tires. We got two sets of singles so that way we have an extra in case one of them breaks because you must carry extras because these things will do break whether uh, they're old and fall apart or you're going too fast and then we'll break and damage stuff as well. And back here, we got uh, the little angle iron uh, hangers, one on both sides of the frame rails. And here we got uh, two doubles. The doubles meaning they cover tandem tires. So that way, we got the whole tractor here covered. And with the singles, we got the trailer covered along with the steer covered, uh, which is if you're in Washington, you have to have that plus extras. But if you check out the description below, there's going to be, uh, be a link for uh, all the state regulations because uh, your chain laws change state by state. And uh, with chains, there's also other options. If you don't want to carry the extra weight because you want to stay around 45,000 pounds because your contracts are your customers, there's auto socks you can use. But if you hit any heavy snow, they don't work as well as these ladder chains. Uh, so the socks, you also limit it to about 10, 15 mile per hour because uh, with personal experience, they're easy to come on and off and easy to get down the road faster, but you do end up tearing them up because you're not going to go 10 mile an hour over the mountain. It'll, it'll take you five hours to get over a mountain like Snoqualmie. And another tidbit about these chains, I run the camber ladder chains. A lot of states say you cannot run the V-style chains. Ladder chains go across the tread all the way across from one side to the other. V chains for off-road uh, application, they make V's, and so you put the V in the direction you're going, and they're a little bit more aggressive about digging in. And that could tear up uh, you, your interstate, your roads you're driving on. Blacktop, it could tear them up. 
Uh, other, other things to know about, about your chains, you can't, you want to put these, these, uh, here, these links that are bent in over, they need to be facing up and not facing your tire. Because if this is on your tire, it will dig in your tire and destroy your tire, and you can have a blowout and it'll be even more dangerous in the long run. So, enough about snow chain, let's go up here over by the in engine. All right, everyone, uh, we're here at the engine and it's freezing outside. I don't know what to do. It's everything's frozen up on the engine. The engine won't start today. Uh, I didn't know the cold weather was coming in, but it's not the end of the world. Because right here is our, our fuel filter and, and our uh, fuel water separator. Since I'm carrying extra filters on the truck during winter time, including the engine air filter, in case uh, some moisture gets in there and freezes up and you don't have enough airflow to run the engine. We also uh, carry a diesel 911. We'll insert a picture so you can see what it looks like. So th these filters have gelled up. Now we will remove the filter and add diesel 911 and it will liquefy the diesel inside the filters again. And then uh, that you can uh, put the filter back on and wait a minute and then start her back up and I'll push it through your whole entire fuel system, unclogging everything. Another thing you want also want to check out about your engine before you do hit these kind of conditions, and that actually does happen to you, is your coolant. If you added water uh, throughout the year, you want to get your coolant checked to make sure it has a good temperature range uh, around negative 30 negative 40 degrees is what you're looking for so if you accidentally end up in that type of weather you're covered but if you're someone down south you can just make sure you're at least negative 20 and somewhere around there also you want to check out what type of engine oil you use we run Delo 1540 per manufacturer recommendation And with uh, 15W40 uh, oil, you uh, need to idle your engine if it drops below 20 degrees. Because uh, when it gets colder than that, your engine oil starts thickening and it won't go and lubricate your engine when you start it up like it's supposed to. And you don't want to be that guy you have to get a, a, a mechanic out here to throw a heater up underneath your oil pan. Uh, make sure you don't have any coolant leaks. Because that stuff uh, will spray out everywhere in winter time. It's one of those times. And springtime is one of those times. Everybody finds out they got coolant leaks everywhere. So try to make sure you don't have no leaks. It's because that's going to be the safety of you not being broke down in uh, sub-zero sub degree weather. But we also put a fuel avid in to keep our fuel from gelling up like we were just talking about a minute ago. We run uh, diesel clean. We'll insert a picture there so you can see what that looks like for the winter time. We run diesel clean just because it has a set tank boost. It also helps uh, lubricate your fuel pump and some other parts on the engine. And also, um, it keeps your stuff from gelling up. When you're running biodiesel, for people out in the west, you'll run into a lot of biodiesel. That stuff has uh, a lot, a lot of uh, water uh, contents to other stuff you don't want to run in your fuel. So we add diesel clean into it. It helps clean all that up so it doesn't get into the engine and start tearing down the engine uh, faster. Oh, yeah, we're back here. Yeah, we forgot to tell you something. The reason why we got our chains organized like we do and separated like we do so they're not up in a big old wad under the bunk. And uh, DOT has asked us personally, how many chains are you carrying? And I want to I count them. So if you got them laid out here nice and easy to where they they can easily see them, they're not going to waste our time by having you pull them out underneath your bunk and laying them out to make sure you have a proper number. You just tell them how much you have. And then you can just continue rolling down the road. You don't want to be an hour with DOT officer pulling chains out because that's inviting uh, other issues. If you don't got that squared away, what else don't you have squared away? All right. Thank you for stopping by. Ladies and gentlemen, y'all have a great day. Pastor Jimmy in a white, I've been a pastor everything inside. Six days on the road and I'm gonna make it home tonight.